Council to order, please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everyone. Uh, just to let everyone know, we have a corrected uh, policy for collection of delinquent taxes, which should have been before each of you as you came in, in addition to a copy of the charge to the succession planning committee that we'll discuss in a few moments. Were there any other amendments to the agenda? Hearing none, we'll move forward. We have no scheduled visitors, correct? Very well, we'll move on to approval of minutes and warrant. Did anyone have any questions on the warrant that was circulated? No, the only statement I was going to make was that out of the $267,000 odd dollars, over $200,000 of that was debt. So we really only spent $67,000 in running the city. That's a good way to look at it. Yeah. Thank you, Mark. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> exactly. And I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. Motion Second. made and seconded. There was one little correction that Joan ended up catching. Oh, okay. So, um, the meeting of the special city council meeting of October 15th, the very last line for adjournment is at 607. Alderman Lowell Bertram moved to adjourn the, it says regular meeting, but it was a special meeting. So, she oh, was very well. To special. Great, thank you. Uh, Lowell, may we make a friendly amendment and address both sets of minutes? Yes. Agreeable? Okay, great. Did anyone have any corrections on either side? I did leave early at one of those meetings. The you did. You left, uh, you left early at the special meeting, I believe, on Tuesday, last week. No, no, it was the one before. before that. Was the one before that? Yeah. yeah. It was on October 8th. Yeah. No, because yep. he ran the meeting last week. That's right, you did. <laughs> you did. <laughs> so we should make note of that in the minutes of the regular meeting on October 8th. We dock his pay, too. We dock his right. pay. The whole meeting. Exactly. And you left at 6.15? Yeah. 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 Over at the elementary school at 6.30. Great. Any others? I had none. Very well. There being none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Minutes are approved. Moving on to business. First item, general expenses. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, provided in your packet were uh, two um, reviews of upcoming 2021 budget, starting with general expenses. Uh, the primary driver of the $2,064 increase in general expenses uh, potentially for uh, the 2021 budget is the contract with the Regenza Area Rescue Squad increased um, by $15,064. I had previously communicated uh, earlier this uh, season to the council that uh, our budget number uh, four of ours is going to be off by that amount this year. So you'll just see that as a correction into next year's budget. And I took the liberty of tweaking the recreation funding up by an additional $500. Um, I think that as we continue to gain traction in our recreation uh, committee and eventual uh, department that, you know, it's going to require funding to get the things done that we want to do. Um, that's really, everything else is pretty much going to end up uh, flat uh, in 2021, and I'd be happy to field any questions to that regard. Any None? questions from that? Okay, <clears throat> moving right along. Uh, the next um, draft that was included in your packet is the Virginia's Police Department. Again, um, the size of the force obviously commensurately impacts um, the medical insurance for the city. Uh, That's the largest driver uh, in the currently plus 30,000, 28 dollars um, uh, uh, proposed increase in 2021. Uh, in conversation with Chief Merkel, this does not continue to 
replenish our fleet, which we know um, is, you know, you know we're vehicles that continue to age. And uh, Chief Merkel and I, for 2020, uh, went after leased vehicles. I encourage the council in the future to continue to go after leased programs so that we're not looking for thirty or $60,000 out-of-pocket expenditures. So if the council next year chose to <clears throat> um, continue on the vehicle replacement initiative that would take the 30 plus 30,000 20 dollars up to 40,000 dollar 44,000 dollars over over this year um, and then everything else is is as i said you know pretty much flat there's cost of living increases as we've done with administration and dpw um, not a lot of other drivers here these numbers also will change uh, probably more significantly than any other proposal or draft that I've given you based on the ongoing um, conversations between the city of Virgins and the union. So they'll be bringing their proposal um, and you could anticipate a, a increased ask on behalf of the, of the department. But I, I don't have any of those details at this time. Um, so that 3.2% is actually looks pretty good, but that also represents a $20,000 reduction in capital purchases. Yeah, so is, the, is, is, it, is there a capital purchase plan going forward over three to five years to know if that's also going to pop up 30000 the following year? It depends on how the council decides to administer that budget bill. But isn't that driven by the chief? Well, the, the $20,000 was to secure the vehicle, the new vehicle for this year. Um, in after after the fact conversation, we decided to go with the lease program, which has brought that down to 14. That's what you're seeing reflected going forward. So, it's either going to be 14 or uh, that could go to 28 if the if the council so chose to. That line item is essentially a vehicle line. Item. That is correct. That's what you're so that it's is correct. Like, it's not computer purchases or it's not something else that that the department needs. Based on change in strategy, um, Chief Merkel does have additional resources to go after computers, uh, some of the body cam money may come out of there as well. So okay. we're going to spend easily the, the full 20 this year. Okay. Any other questions? I have a couple. Matt, um, as we have reviewed each of the department budgets and we've seen an increase, do you have a total yeah, projection? My sub, yeah, my cur current subtotal is $60,888. Uh, increase year over year. Um, that's 2.7 cents on the property tax rate. If everything, you know, again, these are these numbers are so preliminary, and you know, I, I appreciate the fact that the council is so far in front of this initiative. But you know, it's you won't know until after the uh, beginning of the year uh, what many of these you know numbers are, are going to come at in at you know Beamers, Social Security, etc. And my other question is, when do when does the review and do decisions have to be made regarding medical insurance? So the, that occur? the open enrollment is through December 31st. Uh, we are still waiting on one outstanding um, uh, plan. Um, we're, we're having trouble getting a hold of that. Um, if I were to give my guidance to the council right now, based on the information I have, I would suggest that the council, um, that the city continue to provide Blue Cross Blue Shield and that any changes made to the benefit package as it relates to uh, health insurance be made through attrition. So as a city manager uh, moves on or the city clerk re retires, um, a different pay structure would be imposed on new individuals joining the city. Um, we have individuals with comprehensive um, existing medical conditions that um, give me significant pause to want to change our plan. And um, although my previous comment that shifting the, the expense of health care to uh, the employees you know, I used a tongue-in-cheek phrase, I guess, of, you know, a pay cut. You are shifting the responsibility onto employees. As former ma manager Holly reminded us multiple years in a row that I was on the council, we have a very comprehensive benefits package in lieu of higher wages. 
And I think the council really needs to keep that front of mind as we move forward and any decisions are made um, regarding uh, adjusting the compensation or benefits. So then I would assume that in within the next couple of meetings we'll see a proposal regarding the insurance plan? Yeah, um, yes. I, I think you've got a preliminary right now, but um, I'll bring you something solid. I just I want to take a look at this third um, opportunity, a small rate plan through Blue Cross Blue Shield. I just okay. want to know if there's any opportunity to stay with them uh, and not compromise, again, people who would be negatively impacted by a shift to a different provider. Okay. Thank you. Oh. Any other questions for Matt? All righty. Moving right along. The VLCT Initiative for Self-Governance. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, included in your packet, so uh, Alderman Koning had brought to our attention after attending the VLCT Town Fair uh, last month that the VLCT has an initiative um, regarding uh, self-governance for cities and towns. This is um, widely based off or supports a book that was written by Frank um, Bryant and John McLaughrey called the Vermont Papers. And what it really does is it decentralizes, it seeks to decentralize uh, the decision-making process out of Montpelier and bring it back to the communities. Um, they refer to um, uh, regional hubs or shires uh, of which Virgens is uniquely poised to take on this role. As everyone knows, we are the municipal center for uh, northern Addison County and uh, providing you know, both municipal and, and uh, other services to uh, many neighboring towns. Um, but we, our decision-making process is largely driven off uh, what decisions are made uh, in Montpelier. Um, I would call everyone's attention to the uh, third page, um, second to last paragraph, which to my mind really surmises the overall intent. Uh, this is VLT stating, we, be we believe that state and local governments need to be equal partners in delivering services to Vermonters in innovative, effective, efficient, and non-duplicative ways. There are instances where the state should be the entity to deliver a service where consistency is paramount, such as human services, climate change, and environmental integrity, and civil rights protection. There are instances where municipalities are the best entities to deliver services, downtown development, wastewater and water supply, recreation and quality of life opportunities, land use planning, fire protection, et cetera. Um, and there are instances where a partnership will best serve the needs of Vermonters, education, siting, renewable energy generation and transmission, transmission facilities, maintaining and improving transportation networks. So. I'm not sure if everyone has, an, has had an opportunity to read this document, but um, Alderman Koning has requested that a resolution be submitted to VLCT on behalf of the Virginia City Council in support of the self-governance um, initiative. And if the council so chooses, I would be happy to draft a resolution and have it available for our next city council meeting. I think this is really fascinating. I, a lot of just the fact that it kind of talked to how Vermont has this sense that we have a very community-driven political structure, but in fact, we have not when they look at the other, at other states and other examples. So I think that, that sounds, I'd be, I'd be behind that. Great. As would Lowell, he's not an example. <laughs> so uh, why don't we ask for a motion to that effect? So moved. Second. Made and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Proceed. Thank you all. Great. Well, how many how many other resolutions have been forwarded? Do we have any idea what the status well, of is? When I was at the town fair, they said there were already eight or ten communities that had already signed the page three or whatever it was. It's just like a one sentence thing saying we're for it. Right. Okay. Do what you can. Yep. Great. Thank you very much. At our last meeting, we uh, were visited by Stephen Luna, from uh, who is here on behalf of the Mayor's Coalition to End Veteran Homelessness, and we all agreed to a resolution. Um, I will read that resolution for everyone. 
the City of Virginia's Vermont, a proclamation to end veteran homelessness. Whereas veterans are national heroes and the City of Virginia's appreciates their valuable contributions to the security of our residents and our nation. Vermont is home to nearly 43,000 veterans, approximately 73 of whom are homeless and in urgent need of care and assistance. And whereas, since the mayor's challenge to end veteran homelessness was launched on June 4, 2014, several governors, over 550 mayors, and more than 150 county officials nationwide have signed on to the challenge and are committed to end veteran homelessness in their communities by the end of 2019 ambitious, and whereas Vermont agencies use a housing first approach, thereby removing barriers to helping veterans obtain permanent housing as quickly as possible, prioritizing the most vulnerable veterans to identify and engage every veteran experiencing homelessness, and whereas through partnership with the Vermont Veterans Committee on Homelessness, increase early detection and access to preventive services so at so at risk veterans and their family families remain stably housed and whereas vermont agencies monitor progress towards the challenges goal including the success of programs in achieving permanent housing outcomes and whereas the mayor of the city of Virginia has signed on to this nationwide challenge to dramatically reduce the number of homeless veterans and find permanent housing for all homeless veterans in vermont and now therefore be it resolved that we the undersigned members of the city council of the city of Virginia, vermont do hereby endorse and support the efforts of the mayor's challenge to end veteran homelessness and are committed to its ongoing success dated this 22nd day of october 2019 and i will circulate this for everyone to sign please we have five weeks to I, we have five weeks to end homelessness, yes. All righty. I think we can continue that circulating while we move forward to the delinquent tax repayment plan, reminding everyone that we have a fresh copy in front of us. Correct. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. We, uh, Joan and I, have had um, ample discussion at City Hall regarding our delinquent taxes um, year to date um, delinquent taxes are thirty nine thousand forty six dollars versus twenty one thousand two hundred four dollars at the same time last year um, we uh, seek to adopt a um, policy for collection of de delinquent taxes that gives people an opportunity to enter into a payment plan um, uh, first, by way of transparency, we did lift this um, policy from another municipality, uh, and we do feel that there is an opportunity to uh, give people a way out. You know, sometimes when you're looking that looking at that the, the series of bills, it can be overwhelming, and we're uh, hoping to assist um, members of our residents or members of our community to be able to. Uh, enter into and adopt a uh, payment plan that will allow them to stay current. Um, you know, of that thirty-nine thousand, I'll, I'll just say that there's one individual that accounts for twenty-five percent of that over over that forty thousand dollars, and uh, is a you know kind of a habitual. It's been carried for years now, so we may be bringing to the council further action against that. Uh, I'd like to say taxpayer, but it's lack thereof. Um, so uh, again, included in your packet is both the um, recommended policy for collection of delinqu delinquent taxes and a payment agreement form that which we would utilize to set up the agreement. Questions for a minute? What was different than, I see the percentage is different. Yep, percentage, and I had missed a section in where I did uh, not change the name of the municipality. Okay. I would appreciate a motion, uh, Mark. I move to in, enact this policy and uh, payment form to deal with the tax. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? 
I just have a question. Now, yeah. when I read the first one, and I, I'm quickly trying to look at this, mm -hmm. this still includes the penalty. Is that correct? It does, absolutely. If you look at um, number two, 8% penalty is charged on all delinquent taxes. You know, taxes aren't delinquent until the end of the year. Um, they're not delinquent quarterly. So you don't really have a full understanding as to your delinquency until the fiscal year has ended. But that's when the 8% um, penalty is assessed. So even though the t taxes are due four times, the penalty doesn't... Uh, Melissa, am I incorrect on that? Um, considered late until, um, the, the, until May 30th. Yeah. And then it would be delinquent May 8%. Do you know is the one and a half percent interest, is that a statutory amount? I mean, that was pretty common 10 or 20 years ago, but it's pretty high now. Um, I do know that the original document had gone out at one percent and we were corrected um, by mm -hmm. someone more in, in, informed than I, Bill. So, I'm just curious. Yeah. Yep. Maybe out of our hands. Yeah. So this is only for delinquent, not lates? Correct. Okay, I, I, I guess I didn't understand that part. Okay. Okay, any other further questions or discussion? Is there a year over year difference in places this has been implemented in terms of reducing delinquency? Or? I'm not certain about that. <clears throat> um, I do know that um, we believe it to have been affected effective rather in reducing delinquency or just collecting well ultimately the goal is to collect the taxes it would be preferred if they were not delinquent and we were not assessing additional um, penalties uh, but the intention here is to give people instead of maybe a lump sum due quarterly a monthly amount that would add up to their total you know taxes over the course of the year you know, no surprise, many of our delinquent taxpayers are, uh, um, you know, they're in the margins. They're, they're people who are probably already struggling. Um, and it's not of my nature to be punitive when there's an opportunity to be able to offer somebody a viable path forward. And does the viable path forward include any sort of counseling or? That's not my role. My role is to, as the delinquent tax collector, is to collect taxes. It's not, I'm not in a, in a role to counsel or coach individuals um, on their, you know, financial management. But I think to your point, Matt, having something written down where you have the amounts, the frequency, the day, someone has something like that in front of them, they're signed to it, they're agreeing to it, they are more apt to do such a thing just by nature of having that document themselves. I also think it personalizes the interaction between ourselves and, and again, people who may be struggling. Um, you know, we send out delinquent tax letters. They're not the nicest letters, but, you know, sitting down and signing an agreement uh, with the administration may uh, encourage them to be more engaged in that process. And I think to your point, that's actually a form of counseling, the ability to sit no, down with them. Yeah. I, in fact, I mean, not that there's any way for me to modify this time, but any a yeah, face-to-face human contact, I feel like not only a good idea, but probably consequently productive. Right. right, any other questions or comments? We have a motion on the floor. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Moving forward. Uh, City of Virgin's Union Negotiating, Negotiation a Committee. Lynn, is there anything you want to say about this or not? Or are we just simply looking for an update from the no, committee? No, it's on the agenda because um, Alderman Donnelly had forwarded a course, or you had forwarded a correspondence between you and Alderman Donnelly. I'm sorry, Deputy Mayor Donnelly. Oh, that's apologies. Good. <laughs> um, that basically, uh, to paraphrase, stated that myself and Peter Guerin, having been vocally, um, having been vocal regarding the size of the Virginia's Police Department budget, may not be the appropriate representatives for the city 
uh, in uh, the negotiation process. Um, that's why we're. That's why it's on the agenda. Uh, furthermore, she had suggested that she would Correct. be appropriate on that on that committee as well. Correct. <clears throat> I will. Uh, I, I will report that I had a conversation with BLCT on this very subject and uh, by statute it actually is the role of the city manager to act as the negotiator. Um, it is actually part of his job description as well and uh, therefore while he is sitting in this chair, it's uh, in the chair of manager, it is his job to continue with that. Uh, Deputy Mayor Donnelly did suggest that she would be available to step in and uh, that's why we're having the conversation. So to make this very clear, um, I don't object to Matt or Peter being on the committee, but I thought the other side of this should be represented too. More, more so to um, <coughs> show the whole group that it's not a negative party coming in and saying, oh, you know, we want to cut the police, we want to cut your pay, whatever it's going to be, because I don't know what it's going to be yet. That I, and I also feel that the council should be represented on a no negotiating committee so that we have some reference to where we want to see it go. So I was just trying to put a, ho hopefully put a balance onto that committee. So, can you clarify when you say other side? Can you <coughs> clarify that? Excuse me. You, you said you wanted someone from the, on, the other side. Well, the, to come that in. was a promote, proponent for the police, not just you know coming out and saying both Peter and Matt, and then that's their opinion, which is fine. Were very vocal at both the meetings that um, they felt that we did not need the size of the police department that we have. Or the budget that we have. I think so I just but those did, issues have anything to do with negotiating this contract? But, but for, well, I don't know. I don't. Furthermore, they wouldn't, they wouldn't the police union be the other side of the negotiation? That's that's the if, I mean, to your point, if if they will be negotiating for the best package possible, as Matt and the city, who <coughs> reports to us, would be negotiating from the city's perspective or our perspective, because Matt is our, you know, reports to us. So it seems to me like there, there is another side and it's represented by a union and our police. It is uh, an accepted best practice that an elected official not participate in union negotiations. There's a lot of, of information available to support that. And uh, the point that BLCT made was it, it is actually our city manager's position to be biased on behalf of the city. Absolutely. I don't disagree so. with that, but I do not agree that elected officials could not negotiate because school boards negotiate all the time. And there's no difference between a school board and a city council. And my position would be right now is that Matt, as city manager, did a say Fine, you're on. So it would have to be a vote of the council not to let me do this rather than to do it. So that's my position. Well, except that in the school board, the school board's charge is to have a subcommittee of negotiators do that, whereas we have in our charter, the city manager is tasked with negotiations and we rely on him. The, the superintendent of the school is not charged with negotiations. In fact, she's not supposed to. She is, sits at the table, but she is not part of the negotiating committee officially or unofficially. She's, she's not part of it. That is not her task and that is not what, how our school board is set up. So, so it's then totally why, different. All right, so if Matt's going to do it, then why is Peter on? Because Matt has brought somebody in. We have the city council or the, the school board has an attorney that when we need we bring them in and they negotiate to get us through stuff that we don't know. So that Matt can come to this, the council at any time if he wants to do it in open or he can come in executive session and say this is what's happening, where do you want me to go, what's, this is where we are, this is what's going on. He can request our, our guidance and information but 
I don't think any of us should be at the table because that's not how this organization is structured. Whereas the school board, that's a whole different structure. The way we structured that school board actually requires school board members be part of the negotiating committee and the superintendent, who is similar to a city manager, is not, by definition, is not part of the negotiating team. We have the exact opposite within this structure of government. How, how it's been set up, that's just. Yeah, that's up to the council. And just for your clarification, Lynn, I asked Peter, Peter to participate because he has extensive mm -hmm. union negotiation experience on both sides of the table. Yeah, I understood um, that too. Okay. So I guess the question before you all is, are we satisfied with the <coughs> negotiating committee that we have? <coughs> I, I think that if, if Lynn wanted to be on the committee, and I mean, it's really Matt's call. And so if, he, if he's talked with Lynn and said that's okay, I, I mean, I don't have an issue with it. But I, as I understand it from this discussion, it's his call. It is his call. It's also <clears throat> the council's prerogative to make the decision who's on, who is on that committee. So if, if we were dissatisfied with our, our negotiating team's performance, it's a performance issue that comes before us. And then we would have to decide who should be on that committee. Therefore, I, I guess the question is really, are we satisfied with where Matt and Peter are at this point? And if not, then we, we need to reevaluate who is on the committee. We don't know because no, it's all know. confidential. That's well, right. May, Nothing's really correct. So, nothing's really happened. Right. And personally, at this stage, I would just assume Matt runs the show how he sees fit. And if we get down the road and we start getting reports and we're not satisfied where it's going or it's dragging or something's not happening, we want to change it, then we can talk it through. But right now, it's just starting. I'd rather keep it as sweet and simple as possible. We start adding more and more people in. Having been on this is my number five and six rounds of negotiations just started last week, um, the more voices they get at a table, the more confusing it gets, and it, it becomes unclear who's saying what for whom. So I would like to keep it. Kind well, of a, a I think at this point it's important that we we are as informed as we can be. Mm -hmm. And so it should be a regular agenda item. And should there be an issue that comes before you that you need to bring to the council, we need to rely on you to bring it to us. I want to make it clear that um, both sides of the negotiations <clears throat> have entered into an agreement that we will uh, maintain confidentiality uh, until such time that we get into mediation. I will commit to the council if there is something that feels that it's not going in the best interest of the city, uh, I will request of the collective bargaining unit to allow me to discuss that in confidence in executive session. And Ken, do you think this can be finished in three months? I'm hopeful. What, what was the impetus for confidentiality? I understand as it relates to the general public, but I'm not so sure relative to this board. Um, it's a gentleman's agreement, David, that they're not going to be vetting the conversation with their group either. So um, there are three members of the police department on the on the on their side of the negotiation committee. Um, they're not going to be discussing this um, with their group either. <coughs> We don't want this vetted in the court of public opinion uh, in any way, shape, or form. Understood. Everyone is working in good faith, and I want to maintain that integrity. And I will assure everyone that all I know at this point is that they've had one meeting. We reestablished ground rules, right. and our next meeting is on Thursday. So. so I hear no urgency to take any action. Unless you have a big objection. Well, can I answer the question of the deputy mayor? Sure. Go right uh, ahead. So, Deputy Mayor Donnelly, what, I guess my question would be, you know, what, 
What's unclear? Are you wanting to clarify the city council's will uh, you know, to Mr. Chabot as he negotiates? Uh, <laughs> Yeah. I'm not sure that I could answer that because I haven't met with, you know, I don't have any knowledge of negotiating before with police because we haven't done it before. What is your understanding so, of what is being negotiated? I don't know. I have no idea. I have no idea. Okay. So maybe we should ask the city manager, could you please clarify what is being negotiated with the police union and then when will it show up before the council and does it show up? before the public for a direct vote from the public? As I stated previously, uh, I cannot disclose any details of those conversations as we have entered into a confidentiality, confidentiality agreement uh, mutually, both sides. It is not something that would be voted on um, by the public at large. Right. Um, I will be working through the negotiations and prior to ratification, uh, bringing to the council the um, proposed contract. So it's a contract which would show up in front of the city council as an item in the budget, is that correct? Or were there no. other parts? The, the it would not show up as an item in the budget, no. There may be portions, yeah. um, certainly if wages, for example, were um, negotiated uh, above what we have projected as a cost of living increase, I mean, clearly that would be reflected in the budget. So, Deputy Mayor, I mean, personally, I'm comfortable with waiting for the results of the negotiation. I'm fine. Before. I'm fine. I just felt that there was three of them and their negotiator. I thought three of us would be fine, but that's not the will. It's not the will. Thanks for bringing it up. Moving on. <clears throat> so, uh, last week, as you all have heard and you have in your packet the city clerk treasurer informed me of her retirement date which will be February 28th of 2020 um, at this point uh, we'll discuss later on about the succession planning committee so there are some plans afoot uh, at this point it's really more an announcement to you all um, I would like to say that given uh, the next item, I'd like to see the city manager position filled first. I think it's crucial, especially based on the discussions we've had regarding our city charter, that our new city manager be a part of the process. So that is my announcement. City manager job posting job description. So you all have copies of the job description which we adopted last year as a matter of fact i do want to get the actual date that we adopted that and also the uh, posting of the city manager position i have made one change to the posting and that is the salary range which was originally 65 to 85 thousand dollars and i've changed it to 75 to 85 thousand dollars based on the uh, applicants we saw a year ago the uh, the 65 thousand dollar level does not really bring us a whole lot of interest so we have increased that and currently our manager salary is at 80 82 4. So other than that, the, uh, I think the job description and the posting are probably ready to go. We also have um, a ad that we used the last time around, which is perfectly acceptable to use again. My plan is to see this posted tomorrow. Uh, we'll certainly get it on the website right away. We'll get it on the VLCT site and uh, we will do as much advertising as the, ooh, bless you, David, as the uh, $1,000 that I'm now asking, asking of you to spend on advertising will get us. Uh, and um, that is sort of our plan. My plan is to have the, the applicants send their resume and cover letter to my attention and I would like to have uh, two other council members join me in a first round of interviews. Are you volunteering? Mark's volunteering. And David is volunteering. 
in a first round of interviews, and then we will bring the final candidates to the full council. My desire is to see this wrapped up by Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving? Yes, sir. Now, is, is there a way uh, to, um, with all the knowledge that's in this room and people that know other people that not necessarily city managers, but had management experience like Matt did, is there a way that um, as city councilmen we could approach them and say, would you apply or is that kosher? I think it's totally kosher. Um, you know, <laughs> refer everyone to the city website where the job posting will be and the, and the application process. And you know, the more people we get, the better off we'll be. I, I see no problem with that okay. whatsoever. Yes, Do you want to the time frame for um, waiting for the results of that process to come in before we spend on advertising, or do you want to just? No, we need to start right away. I, I think it's critical that when we, we jump, we dive. And so uh, <coughs> we start advertising. And you know, even if each one of us got one person who might be interested in applying, I guarantee you, based on what we went through a year ago, that we would be very frustrated. So I, I think it's critical that we just simply plunge forward. So back to that $1,000. Is that moved? Go ahead. So moved? Second. Second. And seconded? Whatever. Any discussion on that? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Great, thank you. And um, as necessary, I will keep everybody updated, but we're going to hit the ground running tomorrow as much as we can, and uh, we're going to go forward. Charter discussion. Did anyone have any comments to make, by the way, on the posting of the job description? Uh, there, I made absolutely no changes to the job description, and the only change made to the posting was the salary range, and I would imagine that we're all fairly agreeable to that. I thought it was really good. I mean, I hadn't seen it last year, so I wasn't here, but it was a, a good description. Great. Went through a number of revisions. <laughs> did it? It did. Yes. It certainly did. It got wordsmithed. It sure did. <laughs> And, and I, I would like to say that I feel very much like we're, we're in a much better position than we were last year. We had a lot of, we had considerable help from VLCT, and so we have essentially a handbook to move forward. Uh, we have a process in place, and we do have a succession planning committee that we'll talk about in a few moments uh, that will be involved in this process as well. So that was all I had to say, and thank you for the money. Charter discussion. Mark, did you um, want to? So I sent an email out to all of you yesterday saying, you know, speak now or forever. And the minor changes that I made were, it's as you read through, it'll say like section 3.2. And I changed that to the little double S symbol because it kind of called out that you were looking at things within the, the charter as opposed to kind of being buried. The changes I made within Article 7 were uh, on budgeting, some paragraphs are talking about end of fiscal year, some paragraphs are talking about town meeting day. And so there was a disconnect as to when the budget was being decided. We do it on a fiscal year, other towns do it on town meeting, and so I changed anything that was talking about town meeting day and made it end of fiscal year. So just clarifying that that's, that's how our process works. That should have been changed a long time ago. No, I mean, already, uh, that, that, when I borrowed this from oh, another town, oh, I see. they used yeah, yeah, it. Okay, never mind. And <laughs> I had changed some of it, but as I reread it, I, I realized see. I missed a couple of paragraphs okay. where it still referenced town meeting day and thought that's not what we want because that's months before we have to make a decision. Yeah. So that's the only changes I've made to the charter. No one else has anything they think needs I to did, be. Okay. and I, I apologize because it was no. so long that it, it literally. Tell me about it. Yeah. I just, there was just a couple of things. On here, I noticed that the mayor and the council uh, terms were three years instead of two. I changed it over so it's rolling, so that we have three sets then, as opposed to losing half of the council possibly every other year. Oh, so it that was like, intentional. Yeah. So I was thinking that you'd have the mayor and two select board or aldermen up and then two, and then two. So that there'd just be a constant changeover. We weren't only losing two or, or three every other with the mayor would be different. Um, 
and that it would be different for the first round through. So if we were to do this at, at the next, not this coming time meeting, but the next one when the charter would go into effect, assuming everything goes the way it should, everyone on the board would be up for election. Three people would be on for a three-year term, two would be on for a two-year term, and two would be on for a one-year term. The following year, those two that were on a one-year term would then become a three-year term. Mm -hmm. And after it rotates through, then everybody would be on a three-year term. I just wanted to try and spread it out so there wouldn't be a massive impact, possibly, where you're losing half of the council in one election cycle. OK, I didn't understand what you were trying to do. I understand it now. And I thought that um, you were just taking it as if this was a brand new, and we were starting from scratch. I'm not sure that I think that should be a discussion for everybody whether yeah. three years is. Well, that's what the yeah, exactly. Be, but that was well, I didn't even catch that, so I'm glad you did because I um, I kind of skimmed it. And I I just have these, and I, again I apologize for not sending it ahead of time because I it literally was getting done on 15A405. Um, we ever can find it. It was B. Whoops, there it is. Um, let's see, why did I ask that? Should have printed it out then. I know, I wasn't going to do it. Um, what I wanted to know is what a code of technical regulations would mean that if the city council had to produce that, or city clerk had to produce that, um, you said that they needed to do that. Zoning um, is what comes to mind for that. That's what I was assuming it was meaning is if we had any type of technical things dealing with zoning or Act 250 or anything that was going to be that thick, we didn't want to have to printed out for everybody to be available at the clerk's office for review or online for review. Um, but just any any supporting documents that would be uh, in addition to our, our ordinances that. OK. I just didn't know what a code of yeah. technical regulations were. On uh, 15A707, there wasn't a deadline for the uh, clerk to um, Put out the public notice. So I think it was related to um, <coughs> I thought it was something we could easily fix. And maybe there's a maybe, and Melissa can probably tell us if there is by statute a rule. Um, but it was a time uh, t that she that or the or he, the clerk should publish here it is the approved budget and capital program should be public records made available to public yes yep. is there a is there I a timeline to that that sounds like sort of open meeting law type things to me where well that's why i wonder is that for we have minutes and agendas and stuff I, I assume that there's a timeline we could say you know within a week of approval it's going to be approved it's going to be on in our minutes that day so it'll be published to public record almost immediately within our minutes of the, the time we approve the budget. I think that's just part of our, our, our minutes packet for that meeting. It's going to be a film. But um, if it's not part of the statutory requirement, we could add that it makes it feel better that within five business days or something, it's, it's available. Well, I was just, but I didn't I think know. it's going to be instant. As soon as we have the minutes up, that that's attached to the minutes. But we can check and see. I, I, we should check that. I, I think we should. And then on my only last question, you'll be so glad to end this. Oh, one other one other thing is, wasn't the appointments, shouldn't it have been the city attorney? Is it there? No. That's why it takes so long to do this. <clears throat>
additional power. The so under Article Three. I didn't write down the article. Three o four b ten to appoint and when necessarily for the good of service suspend or remove who shall hold office at the will of the council, city treasurer, city attorney. B. So it's the oh, bottom, it is. page seven. Okay, right I missed here. that one. Okay, good. Good, good, good. Um, and my last, this is more of a question, because I, again, why are we, why is there a 120% fair market value on vacant land, residential, anything that's not residential? <laughs> Where did that come from? Where, which section? That's 7, uh, 15A717. Twenty-six, yes. Uh, that came from the. That was from the city of Winooski, wasn't it? Yep. Because that's they that they do that, and that should not be. That should no. Not, I don't should think not be so there. either. Yeah, that's that, that's one of the things I just took it over. I was assuming it was some sort of statutory, but that's why we're going to have public comment yeah. is those kind of things to be. Well. Corrected. Yeah, Can that, we correct that, that whole, that whole paragraph? Should probably just be deleted because they did have cla tax classification. One of the few communities in the state that did it. Well, and Diane was looking at seven eighteen for us whether tips were anything we wanted to have. With yeah, I know. Did, she but, didn't get back to us, right? No. So those might be able to be deleted once okay. we know about well, the tips. Especially Bill, since you know this stuff better. Can you, if you can take a look at Oregon eight <laughs> okay. and see whether or not there are things that we are even reasonable for our our charter to have, because that's out of my knowledge of understanding. That's all my questions. Okay. Anybody else? So hopefully at our next meeting we can approve a charter proposal and file it with the city clerk, who did uh, email everyone with a timetable. So the sooner we get on this, the better and we can schedule our first public meeting. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Fantastic. City Manager Report. Uh, thank you. So as you may recall, uh, when we were walking the Basin uh, McDonough um, Park regarding the orientation of the walking path, uh, I have requested um, that the council approve that I find a way to pay to change the orientation of the pedestrian bridge so that it is in line with um, the path in a more straight line towards the um, stairway um, below um, uh, Bill's, um, Bill's house. Um, Joan had said that there was money available uh, through the Green Mountain um, Power Co-op Agreement that exists with the city. Um, the so we have a fund uh, that currently shows a $40,989.30 balance. Uh, of that amount, um, interest is, I'm sorry, of that amount, interest in the amount of $24,486.26 belongs to Green Mountain Power as addressed in that agreement. We do have the ability to withdraw up to $10,537.38 of that money. Um, Interestingly enough, the arrangement with Green Mountain Power uh, only allows us to make withdrawals in $10,000 increments. Hmm. So I had asked the council for $7,400. Um, we have to draw an additional $2,600. My intention had been that the DPW team may be able to put a pad down there. So we're going to have to move a crane down there. Um, it's a pretty sizable piece of machinery. And we had hoped that uh, DPW would be able to lay down a pad for us. Um, based on the fact that we have to draw a full $10,000 uh, just for me to get the 74 to get the orientation of the bridge moved, I'm now requesting that the council approve the $10,000 draw from the Agreement on Power Co-op. And we would have the same contract or execute both aspects of the of the. Um, of the project, both uh, setting the pad for the crane and moving the orientation of the bridge as well. And they, he's, or they, right. they have said they can do it within the ten thousand dollar budget. Absolutely. Is there? Okay. 
I understand where you're coming from, but if DPW could do it, <clears throat> that money could go potentially elsewhere in the basin. Absolutely. I would need to or for other another project in the sure. basin. Absolutely. No, I would um, just need to go we would need to find the seventy four hundred dollars somewhere else. No, you could use the seventy four and have the twenty six to use elsewhere. Elsewhere? Yeah. Um that's I, I believe that that would and, and it the, really is kind of a moot point. You just need a motion to be able to withdraw ten thousand dollars. Correct. And then the council would ultimately say we have this whether or not DPW does it or we yep. hire the pad out or we spend the money elsewhere, we can decide that in the future. So that's correct. Okay. That's fine. And moving the bridge for seventy four hundred dollars is cheaper than building a new wooden structure? As opposed to metal. I mean we'd have it two bridges then, but I don't know that to be a true statement, Mark. Uh, that other bridge is, you know, obviously metal and wood construction and is it's it's all there. It's solid. So, you the know, bridge is 20 years old. We yeah. paid 5,000 bucks for it. Yeah. The other component is the footings. We need to do new cement footings uh, for this to sit on. So it's not really just swinging the bridge. It's right. the, it, it's the, just, the footings as well. So just wondering if there's there was some concern from Tim Cowan about the elevation of the bridge and the ramp up. Correct. Which I, I'm not an engineer. Yep. I just think we need to make sure we know what the plan is and have it done properly. Agreed. You know, to the credit of the DPW team, they did do the initial lay-in of the fabric and tailings last week. Um, so they jumped right on it. Right. So we need a motion. So motion. Second. Motion is made and seconded. Any further discussion? All in, fla all in flavor. All in flavor. Yep. Please say aye. 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 Motion carries. B. Uh, so this is somewhat uh, bittersweet, I guess I'd say. Um, as we're all aware, last year we struggled to find a candidate to replace former manager, uh, retiring former manager Mel Hawley. At that time, I was available to assist the city by taking on that role, but it was never a personal aspiration to work in municipal government. It has been an exciting year, and I'm thankful to everyone who has supported me. I'm very proud of the work we've all done together. I'm committed to assisting the city in this next transition, and thank you all again for this opportunity to have served as your city manager. Last week on uh, Tuesday, I submitted my resignation to Mayor Fritz, and he has communicated that, communicated that out to the council. <laughs> thank you, Mark. If only we could. I, I would just simply like to say that I am um, saddened to see you go, but appreciate the work that you have done. And I feel that we are in a, in a very good place, in large part thanks to the work that you've done. And uh, I hope that everyone here would agree with that. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you all, truly. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right, moving on to the mayor's report. Uh, local option tax is still there because we promised we were going to leave it on our agenda. And uh, we, of course, are waiting to move forward with our charter amendment. And we have continued to have meetings with the Virgins Partnership um, regarding the whole option. They're supposed to be doing the homework for us. And uh, we expect to see that soon, I hope. Yes, sir. So I had a, a meeting with Rennie um, about this because I was curious as to where it was. And he said that he had been in touch with VLTC and that for some reason, and, I, and, and I'm not sure what it was, that we may, be, may qualify for the, the LOT without a charter change. That's correct. Right. That's correct. But that, but that someone from the s city council or the mayor had to be in touch because he was not, he was not a city, an elected city official. And he could not talk to VLCT and they could not share it. That is correct. And so he just, I said, I'll make sure tonight that we appoint somebody to do that so we can find out if that's true or not because that could affect our timing and our schedule of this and it may be able to move up that 
that potential. Yeah, I have I have reached out to the LCT bill, okay. requesting clarification on that great. as to whether or not it's factual or not. I'm, we're hopeful okay. that it is. That would good. be great. Okay, good. So what he's referring to, there's a preferred list of, of municipalities yeah. within the state that um, should be eligible for LOT without or local option tax without having to go through a charter amendment. So. What, why? What gives those municipalities the? We're special. <laughs> Obvious. It might be a downtown uh, yeah, designation a, thing. It, it, it may it may be related to that or other you know again just municipal hubs within certain counties or communities. Um, Maybe given preferential treatment. Okay. And it's Great. not something easily affirmed. I will just say that it's not just written down. Somewhere. It's not just written somewhere, and and it does require a human, and we that contact has been made. Yep. Correct. Great. We should keep yeah. it in the yeah. charter. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. I should. I would expect to have an answer to this no later than the, the next meeting on the twelfth. Yeah. Right. No problem. Okay. Yep. So that's where we are on the local option. Any questions? Great. Moving on to the succession planning committee, you have before you a copy of the charge that has gone to the planning committee. I would like to read it for the record. Uh, charge to the mayoral committee on succession planning, October 21st, 2019. The mayoral committee on succession planning is charged with assisting the city council by providing a plan of action to develop a strategic and long-term succession plan for city clerk treasurer and city manager. This action plan will include an assessment of and recommendation for the effective transfer of duties and institutional knowledge as employees transition. The committee will review job descriptions, make recommendations based on their research and interaction with the city clerk treasurer and city manager for the effective transfer of specific duties and present the City Council with an implementation plan. The committee will work closely with the City Clerk Treasurer, City Manager, other City employees, the Mayor, and all City Council members as required. The committee will be expected to submit written updates to the City Council following each meeting. Full cooperation with the committee for the benefit of the City is expected and required. The committee will be comprised of not more than five members, chaired by Helena Van Voorst, and will meet as frequently as deemed necessary and will present their recommendations to the City Council no later than the first regular Council meeting, January 2020. In my initial conversation with Helena, the, um, the original intent of this committee was, as we look forward to the City, look forward, that is the wrong, look to the future to the city clerk treasurer's retirement. Uh, obviously, with the transition of our city manager, it seemed prudent to include them in that process as well. So they will be reviewing our job description, our posting, and uh, will assist us with the development of the job description for the city clerk treasurer. We adopted one last year. It probably will need to be updated. And uh, we need to look to their to them for some recommendations. As I said earlier, I think it's crucial that we focus right now on getting a new city manager in that chair. And uh, once the new city manager is in place, they will participate with the committee and uh, we'll, we'll hit the ground running in January as we look to find a new clerk treasurer. Any questions? Could this be expanded? I realize that department heads are purview of the city manager, but yeah, it could be expanded. I mean, they wouldn't be maybe making the recommendations, but helping the city manager figure out job descriptions or, or how to go about institutional knowledge of anybody running a department would be also beneficial. So this. one of the original parts of that conversation was, well, you know, we we may be looking at at department heads transitioning as well. So uh, the, the, this committee intends to make it in many ways as broad as possible. Uh, really what the focus is to, is to give us a plan of implementation so that when we are faced with a transition, we're prepared to make that transition. So I'm actually happy to specifically amend the charge to them. And so, that, so to your point, this is not a temporary committee. This is something that will be ongoing to be constantly thinking about these things um it's sort of a temporary ongoing committee it would not it, it would it would not be a committee that would 
Right. Yeah. That we continue to meet once, you know, there's no reason for this committee to meet if there are no transitions being made. Um, it is of particular interest to Helena to participate in this because of her job. Mm -hmm. And in her position, she feels that she needs to be able to help um, uh, uh, organizations that are, are funded and assisted by the United Way with succession planning. It's something that we all face, yeah. every organization. So it's a good tool for them to have as well. So, yes. When they get bored, you have more things than they do. Exactly. <laughs> so this is really a two-prong committee. Their first charge is to help us figure out the basic draft plan. This is insert position here, and this is how you do it. Right. And then help us run through that plan for specific positions as Exactly. They exactly. Letting us know this is what's happening. Uh, I made all committees. So I don't think you need us. No, I don't think so. But thank you. Are so, there, are there five people on it right now? There are four. Yeah, there are four. And uh, as soon as we get their written report, you'll know who they are. Yeah. Great. Great. They're supposed to be having their first meeting, their first actual formal meeting next week. So by our next meeting, we should see a report from them. Any other questions? The only thing I would like to say once again is in spite of us being confronted with a lot of change, I feel very good about our ability to move forward. And uh, we've, we've been through this before and it's, it's all going to be very, very positive for everyone. All right, moving along. Virgin's economic corridor update. So as you know, uh, the city manager and I have been on the road for the last few months uh, gathering support for our initiative to construct an alternative truck route. We have received overwhelming endorsement from the communities that surround us uh, as far as Weybridge. And um, we continue to have one community that is not jumping on the bandwagon with us, and that is our neighbors in Panton. They have some concerns that I believe uh, we will be able to address. And Mike Winslow attended their select board meeting last night and uh, has sort of helped move them along, I hope. Uh, we believe that they will be uh, provisionally writing a letter to, the, to Secretary Flynn of, in support of a study which is really what we're asking for. We have to, studies to do. The secretary uh, is eager to push this study through. It's a million dollar study that needs to occur. And uh, at that point, it brings everyone to the table to be part of the conversation. So we have to get there first. Shannon, do you want to add anything to that? Um, no, I think the process is moving along nicely. Uh, also, as, as you said, Mike is, is there working on that. Um, yeah, we're, we're just trying to make it all happen. It continues to be really positive. Yes. We've, we've had a lot of really positive comments from our neighbors. Yeah, so. And, and at, at regional planning level, the, the TAC is behind this, um, you know, and supportive of this. So, you know, we're just trying to get all of those, those last minute people signed up. Great. Thanks, Shannon. Any questions? Any citizens' comments? Yes, sir. Perfect. I wanted to inform the city council that the city of Virgins has been selected as a case study, one of six in the state, uh, for planning for great neighborhoods project. Um, so on November 4th, uh, our zoning administrator, Peter Guerin, myself, and uh, uh, Tim Cook, We'll be attending a workshop um, where we'll be talking about our zoning regulations and our plan. And um, a, a group of consultants will be taking that information and then coming back to us about a month later with recommendations. Um, and the timing is perfect. We're nearly done with our plan update. And then we'll be going on to a regulation update. And we'll be able to take some of the things that we're learning in there um, and maybe make some changes that will benefit us housing-wise across the city. Great. Excellent. That's great news. 
Thank you. I, I do have a question. It could have, have either of you or Matt had any formal questions from Ferrisburg about the boundaries of the two communities? No. Uh, not directly, no. Because they, they did have that discussion uh, maybe three months ago. Correct. Yeah. We're, We've, we're, we're aware of the conversations. I'm sorry. No, go right ahead. Uh, they are, we have not been asked directly or indirectly by Ferrisburg in that regard. Because I am concerned that that could potentially affect the they they as as we court. are encouraging uh, Pant, Panton to do, they have included that uh, concern in their letter of support for the initial study, and we have encouraged our neighbors. If you have concerns, you know, please just support the study so we can get the process started. Um, are you saying Ferrisburg included that concern? Yes, they did. But again, that would be indirect communication because that went to Secretary. And, you know, Pan has concerns regarding the original orientation um, of the corridor uh, when this conversation came around last time, that it was... 2000. Yeah, mm -hmm. that it... They had said that they were concerned that it would, could potentially move in the final design from yep. what was discussed a year ago in the preliminary design. Correct. So we've just asked them to please approve the study getting started and include their their concern about the orientation or any other um, concerns that they may have. Thank you. The real frustration we had was that Panton in particular was asking questions that a study would answer. So we, we needed to get them to agree to at least move forward with the study. Okay, anything else on that? Any other questions or comments? In that case, I'll make the motion to adjourn. Second. Motion made and seconded. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Meeting adjourned. Thank you all very much. Thanks, everyone.